Hey folks, welcome back. My name is Nigel and in this video we are installing an ARB base rack onto my Land Cruiser 80 series. We've got everything set up here. Uh, just a quick practical point, if you're ever doing anything like this, it's super helpful to get surface areas that you can lay everything out, read your instructions, get everything together, make sure you have the right tools, all that sort of stuff, ready to go. Um, so we're going to be doing that now. So the first step that they tell you in the instructions is to try and uh, see the distance between the gutters on your roof. So this is where the base rack is actually going to sit in. So I had these old um, toolway, or however you pronounce that Swedish brand, um, racks. These things are a bit beat up, a little bit bent, etc, etc. I use them a lot for hauling timber and ply and all sorts of stuff like that. Uh, but I used this to gauge the width of the vehicle. So I basically put it in, made sure these were in the gutter, took it off very carefully without this thing moving, and then we were able to measure between them just for interest. My 80 series is 131 and a half centimeters between the gutter on either side. Might give or take a little bit for a little bit of play, etc. Uh, but yeah, that's the first step. Next step is we're going to be starting to mount the uh, actual uh, brackets onto the roof rack and then we'll get that up on the roof. So we'll take you through the whole process. So let's go. So one of the things that you're going to need to do is choose which of these bars you put your brackets onto. So the way that the base rack works is that your brackets go into uh, the actual cross member bars. So what we did is we just uh, carried the base rack to the side of the vehicle just vertically and then just had a look at roughly where it's going to sit on the roof and then we were able to make a decision. Essentially you don't want more than two of the cross members uh, without a support in between. So this is the layout that we're going for. So this is actually the front uh, set of gutter brackets. This is the middle and then that's the back. Knowing that realistically we're probably going to be putting more weight on the back that's probably roughly how we're going to pack this thing and, and actually use it. And uh, the other thing as well is that these just fit a bit better in terms of where the pillars are on the vehicle. The closer you can get it to the pillar, the better because they give you more structural support, etc. So yeah, we're going to get these mounted and then crack on. Now we're going to put the bolts through these stud plates like this, and then they drop onto the rack cross members and twist around and then they kind of lock into place and uh, then we can put the brackets on and tighten them up once we've got the width correct for the gutters. Next is to put this little, what they call a Christmas tree lug, through the little hole. You can do this in multiple ways, but this is how I'm going to do it on this. Put it in the end one there, push it all the way through. Then you take one of the feet and then that just helps you to line things up and get it correct. And then that drops on to here like this. And we can then put the next bracket on and tighten that down. And then you're putting the support plate on like that with this little indent uh, on the same side as the Christmas tree lock. You can then slide these around and adjust them. Uh, but now we're going to finger tighten the nuts onto these bolts so that we can then measure and get these centered in the right width for the gutters. Once you've got these just finger tightened and kind of ready to go, you can then start putting the actual gutter mounts on like this and just finger tightening them so you can start uh, getting closer to getting the width right of your brackets and everything else. All right, so I've just nipped the two bolts that hold the actual gutter uh, rail. I've nipped those down just not super tight, but just to the first setting using a torque gun. So that, and, and the idea is that we we want this kind of as close to being set as possible so we can get the distance right between the, the actual gutter mounts. If you have it too loose, then you might have some play and you may not get that accurate. So this will allow us to get that width right. Then we'll nip these down, maybe not fully tighten. We'll be able to lift the rack up onto the roof and then actually uh, just check, get the height of these right. So once we've got it up on the roof, we'll be able to adjust these and get it just right. I want it to be kind of as close to the roof as possible. So it's not way off the roof. So it's as low profile as possible, but still have enough clearance. So it's not actually hitting the roof or anything like that. Just nipping this down like this allows you to get a bit more accurate in terms of the measuring and positioning of everything. We'll get it up on the roof, check everything looks okay, bring it down and then do a full time once we've adjusted and made sure everything looks all right. So 
that was the woods, basically. So, um, I've just got a spanner now, and I'm just undoing these things that I nipped down, just to be able to adjust them so that we get this position nicely into the gutter. So we just get some play on the brackets, be able to straighten things out, adjust things, and then tighten them back up. And this isn't the final tighten, this is just to hold things in place so that we can take it off and readjust things if we need to. For example, here you can see that's way off, obviously there's quite a little play on those, but that will need to be adjusted so that so they're sitting in the gutter properly, but also where it needs to be. So what we did is we undid all of these bolts, actually dropped it down as far as it'll go, and then uh, we're tightening them up. And uh, one of the things, this is basically as low as it'll go as far as the adjustment space is concerned. These brackets won't go any lower. And the clearance is probably an inch and a half from the highest point on the roof, which I'm happy with. It's basically as low profile as we can get it, um, but still clearing everything. So looking pretty good. Just adjusting it and tweaking things as we go to get it all right before we actually clamp it on. All right, so we've made uh, various adjustments all around on everything. Um, pretty much loosened all of the bolts because there's a bit of a curve in the roof here. And uh, obviously also just um, adjusting things just to get it centered nicely and get the actual gutters into the, the, the rails into the gutters nicely. Get these straight with that. So now I'm going around just tightening everything up nicely. Obviously, some people like to put Loctite on the bolts for these things, but um, I can't see realistically how you can easily do that unless you uh, sort of tighten everything down reasonably when it's on here, take it off, and then undo each individual bolt and that so that stuff doesn't move around, and then put Loctite on. So. That's probably the only way that you can actually do that, that I can see. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna leave the, the Loctite off here. And uh, after I've driven a bit, I'll just check everything, make sure that it's all uh, holding correctly and nothing's coming loose. I think she's on there. So, uh, yeah, got a mount. We actually landed up sliding it. Initially, this um, center pillar bracket was about here, centered here. <coughs> and uh, these, these brackets stick out quite a bit more than other, than, like for example, the other racks that we had on there. But I think it's just largely down to, it's just more substantial. Those two layer, two layer or however you pronounce that word, uh, those brackets, very thin um, metal that comes around and clamps onto the gutters. So uh, these are just much more substantial. And when we put it here, not only was the rubber on the door actually hitting the bracket, but it was actually hitting the top of the door. So we slid it back about six inches-ish, uh, sort of 15 centimeters, uh, which gives a little bit less clearance on the back of the door. And I'm planning to get the roller the ARB roller on the back here because I often use this rack for loading sheets of ply, timber, etc. on there. So it's going to be super helpful to have a, a roller on the back there. I think we'll just clear the door, but that's a problem for another day. We may need to move it forward slightly, but yeah, overall, pretty pleased with how it's all come together. One tip that I would uh, give anybody if you are installing this on the 80 series is uh, to start with fastening your center 
pillars or brackets first before you move out to the edge ones. So what we found is, because there's a bit of a curve on the roof, they can't be exact, so when you're trying to get it level and stop it from rocking, etc. Basically, you want to start with this one being as low as it can possibly go, and then move out and adjust your outer uh, brackets so that you stop the rock and, and all that sort of movement. That's the one advice that I would give you. And, and the other thing as well is that it doesn't actually work to fasten one, one pillar on one side fully before you kind of have to do it in stages. So what we were doing is when we first started with these center ones, tightened this just in a little bit, went around to the other side, tightened that in, came back to the side, tightened it in again, basically did it in stages so it was evenly pulling it into the gutters. Because what happened was we found is if you just sent it with one of these, it pulled the whole rack over, pulled the whole bracket right against the edge of the gutter here, which isn't what you want. Because then on the other side it was starting to pull the, the, the bracket up the roof um, and just take it out of the gutter essentially. So we stopped, backed it off and then did that backwards and forwards. We actually did that with all of the brackets. We've now got a really it's consistently seated in a very similar place. We've used these protectors on the bottom just to stop it from scratching the roof and uh, creating potential rust spots. Like with any racks, it does hit the rubbers a little bit. This one here, I'm probably going to trim a bit, but overall pretty pleased with how that went on. So pretty straightforward, probably took us uh, less than probably just over an hour actually to install that so it's pretty straightforward it's <clears throat> I'm really impressed nice build quality my dad and I were just saying the main reason why I went for the ARB over probably front run is the next equivalent that we can get in the UK sort of easily accessible um, main reason why I went for the ARB is because I like the fact that it's a welded unit and the only screws on it really are the corners where you can take the corners off to run cables down the channels if you want auxiliary lights and stuff like that but uh, pretty pleased with how that's turned out and uh, yeah we'll uh, report back and give a review in a year's time or something once we've used it a bit but yeah thanks for watching folks and we'll see you in the next video cheers